Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at what happens when we're dealing with a non-conservative vector field and we're trying to use Green's theorem. Again, we have Green's theorem up here. Notice that if the vector field is conservative, then the line integral around any closed loop hat is indeed going to be zero. But like I said, we're now going to use a non-conservative vector field and we've accomplished that by taking the plus sign here and making that into a negative sign. In the next video you'll see the difference and how that affects Green's theorem. Again, assuming that we have a vector field which is defined as p in the i direction plus q in the j direction where p and q are both functions of x and y and then you can see that this format of the line integral can be written as this format of the line integral which is usually what you find as expressed in Green's theorem. So now having a non-conservative vector field, we're going to evaluate the right side of Green's theorem. Let's see what happens in this case because this is kind of a special type of non-conservative vector field. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So this is going to be equal to the double integral over the region R enclosed by the path of integration. And in this case, the path of integration is assigned, defined right here as x squared plus y squared equals a squared. That's simply a circle centered about the origin of radius a. So we're going to then take the partial derivative with respect to x of q. In this case, q is equal to a minus x. So we put a minus x there minus the partial derivative with respect to y of p, and p is defined as y. And the whole thing times dA, and this is going to be equal to, well, this will become equal to the double integral over the region enclosed by the path of integration, and this is going to be a minus 1, minus 1 times dA. Now, why is this a special case? Well, notice the quantity within the parentheses here, the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y is actually a constant. And when that's a constant, I can take, take it outside the integral sign. So this becomes equal to a minus 2 times the double integral over the region times dA. And what we said here was that the integral over the region is going to be integral over the region enclosed by this particular equation, which means that the area of this region is simply going to be the area of a circle of radius a, and that area is going to be pi a squared. So this can now be written as minus 2 times this integral over the path of integration. So the area enclosed by this path is going to be the circle of pi a squared, which means that this then becomes minus 2 pi a a squared. And so that's a fairly easy way to use Green's theorem to evaluate a line integral when you have a non-conservative vector field. Oh, and what I should say here is pick a non-conservative <laughs> vector field. Notice that I left that up from the previous video and I forgot to add the non-conservative because in this case we're actually dealing with a non-conservative vector field. When we evaluate it, this of course will then not be zero as it was in the previous video. And notice that if we have a constant here, it simply then becomes evaluating the area of the path enclosed. And that's how we deal with Green's theorem when we have a non-conservative vector field. That's how it's done.